Greetings, dear friends. Here we are in the season of Easter. I trust that you celebrated well on Sunday, and although a different kind of celebration, we weren't gathered together with lots of friends. Uh, just my wife and I, we celebrated together. We did some FaceTime with our children and our grandchildren. Maybe you did the same. But nevertheless, Jesus lives, and he's risen, and he's risen indeed for us. And so we are thankful that we have hope in him and that we can continue to rejoice because he lives. I'd like to share with you the first reading for this coming weekend as we look forward to this next Sunday. And the reading, maybe you've noticed before, but in the readings in the season of Easter, we, the first reading is not an Old Testament reading. It's always from the book of Acts. Uh, it's known as the Acts of the Apostles, maybe more rightly, the Acts of the Holy Spirit working through the Apostles, or the Acts of the Risen Christ. Well, I'm going to share with you the reading for this coming weekend from Acts, in Acts chapter 5. The disciples were proclaiming the truth that Jesus is the Savior, he's risen from the dead, and many, many people have, were coming to faith and trust in the Savior and the leaders, the priests, the leaders of the people, the Pharisees were upset and they had them arrested, the apostles arrested, and then the Lord got them out of prison. I'm going to read for you uh, the story that took place here from Acts chapter 5, beginning, um, I'll start with verse 27. And when they had brought them, they sent them before the council, and the high priest questioned them, saying, we strictly charge you not to teach in this name. Yet here you, are, you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you intend to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostle answered, the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill them. But a Pharisee in the council named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law held in honor by all the people, stood up and gave orders to put the men outside for a little while and said to them, Men of Israel, take care what you are about to do with these men. For before these days, Thoidas rose up, claiming to be somebody, and a number of men, about 400, joined him. He was killed, and all who followed him were dispersed and came to nothing." After him, Judas the Galilean rose up in the days of the census and drew away some of the people after him. He too perished, and all who followed him were scattered. So in the present case, I tell you, keep away from these men and let them alone. For if this plan or this undertaking is of men, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. You might even be found opposing God. So they took his advice. And when they had called the apostles, they beat them and charged them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Then they left the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the name. And every day in the temple and from house to house, they did not cease teaching and preaching that the Christ is Jesus. I share those words with you because those are encouraging words. We need to hear encouraging words these days. It's encouraging to see how the apostles were um, telling the people about the truth that Jesus is the Christ and that he had fulfilled all of his work. He died, he rose, by this time he had ascended into heaven. The Holy Spirit had come to empower the disciples. And it was encouraging to see how the work continued, even though they were oppressed, and even though they were told by the authorities not to tell people about Jesus. 
It's also interesting that God used one of their very own to help them think through. Gamaliel, a teacher, one of the major individuals of that day. Paul talks about how he was a student of Gamaliel and how he learned from him as he was a Pharisee and trained in the law too. And yet, he, Gamaliel gave this words of wisdom. He said, this is nothing new. Others have come before. They have, they have a, a following, and when they were killed, their followers were dispersed. Just leave these men alone. If this is a human thing, if it's just from man, it's going to fail, and you don't have to worry about it. But if it's from God, he said, be careful, because you cannot stop it. Well, we know that it was from God. After all of these years, we know that the Lord Jesus is indeed our true God and Savior. And throughout the history of the church, he has continued to bless and bring many people into the faith. One of the uh, other encouraging things in this reading, I think, is, is where the disciples and the apostles, Peter and the others, they rejoiced as they were beaten as they were told not to tell others about Jesus. They rejoiced that they were counted worthy to suffer for the name. It's interesting how this puts a perspective on suffering, that we suffer as Christians sometimes. And as we take the lead from the apostles, we can see that this is an honor and a privilege to suffer for the name of Jesus in whatever way it might be. Uh, let's be encouraged by that. Oh, and I have another word of encouragement for you, too. In the very next chapter, chapter 6, we hear at the beginning about how they organized for ministry. We hear about how they chose seven to help distribute the food to the poor while the apostles can continue to do their work of proclaiming the word and, and praying. And then we hear these words in verse 7, just in a few verses later from the reading we have for today. And it says this. And the word of God continued to increase, and the number of the disciples multi multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. How encouraging that is, that those were who were opposed to the apostles, who were opposed to Jesus, it says, a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith they too became followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, even though we can't be together right now, and we pray that that's going to end soon, uh, we still can communicate God's word, and we will continue to do that, whether in person or on camera, in your homes, on the computer. We want to continue to reach out to you, and we will. I'd like to uh, close with a prayer. I'm taking it from the... The, the Lutheran prayer book that I got when I was confirmed years ago. And I'm going to pray a personal prayer here. There's a section here on personal prayers. And this is a prayer for patient endurance. And let's pray. Gracious God, I am troubled and disheartened. Time is a heavy burden for me. I grow weary, discouraged, and fearful because of my problems. Yet I know you can rescue me from my confusion. You set the stars to move in precise rhythm, and you can bring order to my affairs. To you, a thousand years are but a day, and you can give me the patience to live today as a day of grace. To you, one day can be as a thousand years, and you can help me to live today with the hope and patience of eternity. In Jesus Christ, your Son, you have begun the new age of life and immortality. In him, give me courage and strength. Amen. God bless you and keep you until we visit again.